What's going on guys? We got a project tonight. This is a rush project for the wife. So what we got is we got a sheet of 3 16 aluminum diamond plate. Diamonds on the bottom. I got it flipped upside down because I'm going to lay it out here. It's for a pig box. I got three kids that are doing pigs in the livestock show this year. So we need a box for them to put all their pig dongshi, that's Chinese for stuff, in this box and then they can keep it all together and you know hopefully don't lose it and it's just makes things more organized. So we're gonna get rolling on it. It is currently 7.20. I'm gonna try to get this done before midnight because I gotta work tomorrow. So I'm gonna see what I can get cranked out here. Let's do it. So we've got all the pieces cut except for our door piece and that one's going to take a little bit more because it's going to have a lip on the bottom to keep the stuff in when you fold the lid down. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to break two ends. That'll save me time in welding and it'll look good. It'll be, you know, it's just more efficient. I've got a break, why not use it? So we're going to break this and this will be the back and two sides, we've got this top piece, and then this piece we're actually gonna cut for the front. So, everything should be here. Um, don't mind the shop, it's a disaster, because I was out here all night working on a trailer, putting a hitch in it, um, and I didn't have time to clean it up, which is completely not like me, but Things are chaotic right now. We got the stock show. The boys have started playing football, so just a lot going on. But I want to try to get this done for them to use in the show. So let's see if we can't get this laid out and broke. Okay, so I've got to shear a little bit of this off. It's a little bit long. Okay, so we got it sheared, now we're going to go break it.
down. Gives you a nice, pretty, pretty break. We got the old sinker wave plugged in. She's a little noisy. She's a runner. Cleaned off a section of the table, a section of the table. We're gonna start tacking this together. I've gotta clean where all the plasma slag was. I wanna clean it up, make it nice and square. So I'm gonna do that now, and then I'm gonna start tacking. We're using an aluminum flapper wheel. I've only used this on aluminum. We don't want cross-contamination. Just a quick tip, only use certain buffing wheels, grinding wheels. Aluminum requires a special grinding wheel, by the way, specifically made for aluminum. But if you use a zip disc, a buffing wheel, a flap disc, you only want to use that on aluminum or stainless. You don't want to cross-contaminate that with carbon steel or you'll end up getting rust marks on your beautiful new aluminum or stainless piece. Let's get to it. Another fabricator trick. Oh no! Maybe that other one's long. <laughs> uh, well, those are really handy if they're long enough, which they're not. I could get another piece of pipe, put it on there, but I don't think I have a piece. Son of a gun! I really need that. <clears throat> I gotta just see if I got a longer piece of pipe. We're gonna improvise because I'm in a hurry. And I don't wanna take half an hour to make a new pipe. So, those are really handy, but they gotta be long enough. So, what I'm gonna do, put a clamp on this table, and then I'm gonna push against this, clamp this one. All right, let's get some tacks on this bad boy. Another pointer, flip your hood over, flip it upside down so you don't fill it full of grinding grit so that when you put it on your head, you fill your eyeballs full of aluminum powder. Because that's fun. I know, because I do it all the time. Okay, so on this, I think this is a 16 style torch. I'm running 332 tungsten. And this is pure tungsten because that's a transformer machine running AC. I'm running about, I've got the dial turned up to 225, but I probably will only hit that if I'm trying to just hot tack it. We're running pure argon, so let's do it. We're going to tack it with 332 4043 aluminum rod. Tack ups our door. So I'm going to lay out what the door is going to look like. Got my doorway all figured out. It's all laid out. Now it's just time to cut it.
after I got that piece cut out, I took a piece of flat bar, stitch welded it on the inside. I don't have this, I don't have this tacked yet. I'm just working on getting it tacked. So the door will swing open like this. They can put their pig whips and their spray and brushes and all that crap in here. See if we can't get it all tacked up and then we can start welding it. down you want an open corner like that that way when you run your weld it just fills in and gives you a nice fillet right there we got it all tacked up the only thing left to do is weld it out obviously we got to get the hinge and stuff like that put on but for now that's all that's left to do to build the, the structure itself so I'm just going to start welding and I'm going to bounce around. Aluminum likes to warp. It's a big heat sink so it just sucks all that heat in. It'll spread really quick because it's such a good conductor. So I'm going to go ahead and bounce around. I'll do a little bit here, a little bit there. Just keep moving around just to try to keep it from warping. So let's do it. side project going on I probably should have started recording this a little sooner but I didn't really have someone to help me with the camera and just kind of had my hands full working on it so what we got going is I have picked up a hydraulic pump here it was honestly in pretty rough shape there was all kinds of stuff on it that was kind of rigged up not the way it was supposed to. It actually is supposed to have a cover that goes over the motor. <clears throat> it's missing. I only gave 150 bucks for this, so that's really not bad considering if you buy a brand new one like this, you're going to spend five, six thousand dollars. So what I've done is I've taken the hydraulic valve off. This is a dual acting pump, which means it will make a hydraulic ram extend and retract both ways and when I say that <clears throat> a lot of you are probably thinking well even a single acting will make it extend and retract yes it will retract but when you retract it really all you're doing is releasing the hydraulic pressure and the and the ram will just return to zero this ram runs two directions so it'll extend the ram and then it uses pressure to retract the ram. So they're a little bit more coveted, I would say, uh, but they're also more expensive. So if you walk over here, I have completely tore this hydraulic valve down, cleaned up all the parts, completely degreased everything, tore it apart. Uh, there was actually the handle this is the top of the valve. That was there. This shaft runs up through there and there was supposed to be a handle on there. Uh, there was a screw snapped off in that so I was able to drill it out and extract it. My wife did me a solid and picked up my parts on the way home from work today. Picked up a new handle. This is the rebuild kit for the valve so there's all kinds of o-rings and seals in there we're gonna work on rebuilding that and get it put back together so that we can put it back on the pump we also picked up hydraulic we'll get the valve rebuilt 
and then we'll go to that point because I'm going to get some fittings for it and there's a guy just down the road that does hydraulic stuff so uh, let's let's just rebuild it we'll go to that point and go from there We got the valve all put back together. We got a new handle put on. We replaced all the seals and O-rings inside the valve. Got a new breather for it, which is actually the factory breather. We cleaned out the whole pan. We put brand new hydraulic oil in it. And I did plug it in and just bump the power and the motor sounds good, everything's working good there. I couldn't test it out without having a RAM to plug into it, so I actually just purchased a tool that I was gonna test it with, but I didn't have it yet at this point. And I still need to get some hydraulic fittings to plug into that valve. Hoping to pick up the tool tomorrow, and I'm just gonna give a shout out here this guy here, his name's Taylor Dixon, and he's one of the owners for Elevated, which is a portable hydraulic hose repair company, and they can come to you and replace your hose or your hydraulic fitting or whatever, whatever it may be that has to do with hydraulics. Just go ahead and check them out. They're all over social media. They're on YouTube. They're on Instagram. They're on TikTok, I believe. So anyway, check them out. I actually gave a shout out to him and he's going to help me find the right fittings for this so that I can hook up the tool I just purchased. So anyway, let's uh, move on. All right, I can't stand it any longer. I'm super excited about this one. I wasn't going to do this week's super cool tool on this one, but I'm just so excited I can't stand it. So I'm going to do it on this. So what we've got here is an Edwards 10 ton pipe and tubing bender. We'll give you a better look at that here in a second. We've got the hydraulic pump, Interpac hydraulic pump here that I took and rebuilt the valve, went through the whole thing, I pulled the whole thing apart, cleaned everything out, it's got brand new hydraulic, had to put a new breather on it, I fixed up some of the wiring, like I said the valve is all new, Hydraulic fittings are new. Uh, two doors down. Taylor, my neighbor, two doors down, is Taylor Dixon, which is one of the owners for, if you look him up on social media, it's Hosers. And he does portable hydraulic hose repair. So it's kind of convenient to have him right down the road. Their business name is Elevated Hydraulic hose repair I believe but anyway got this all fixed up and I'm super excited so let's uh, let's take a closer look this pipe bender is actually made to run off of an Edwards iron worker you can actually plug this into your iron worker and it uses the hydraulic pump on your iron worker to run it but obviously I don't have an Edwards iron worker so I ended up getting hold of a friend who sold this to me for 150 bucks the handle was broke off he had never even ran it he bought it off a second-hand website that we use here in Utah so anyway I bought it from him for 150 bucks and I went through the whole thing cleaned it all up put new hydraulic in it rebuilt the valve and sucker runs like a dream there is a lot of reasons that this one here is a big win I bought this also on the second hand website that we use here in Utah. This actually was had been on there for almost a month and I think usually after a month the ads they expire. This is a brand new pipe bender. The guy that had it never even used it. Never had any dies. He bought it because they were doing uh, custom vehicle fabrication 
they were chopping hummers and stretching them and they bought this thinking they were going to use it and they ended up not using it. Lucky for me, they posted it online. I saw it and I got it for about $2,600 less than the brand new price. So, I was tickled pink. But it's got a lot of cool features. You'll see how it works here in a second. The pins, I don't have any dies yet. Dies are six to $800 a set, so I'm gonna have to save my pennies. But I'll be able to show you guys how this works with the dies. It's got a cool pan here, a cool tray. You can put the pins in, your dies, stuff like that. One of my favorite features is this. If I loosen this, that head locks and then you can bend it horizontally or vertically and I think that is just awesome because if you're building if you're building a piece of pipe that's got some wild angle there's times where you're gonna have to be able to spin it or turn it, it just makes it easier to be able to bend it up so that you're not hanging things and having to come up with some convoluted way to get it done so it's got a gauge here that when it's running you'll be able to see as you bend the pipe around you'll be able to mark zero it'll tell you how far the bend has gone that's awesome um, another feature here it's got this system here it weighs about 500 pounds so if I want to lift it up I push that down and then I can roll that sucker across the shop smooth as butter. Without further ado, I think we should run it. As you can see, I've made a mess. That is a typical hydraulic endeavor. I don't know that I've ever worked on anything with hydraulics without shooting hydraulic across the shop all over myself. So this is now a genuine hydraulic endeavor. Enough talking, let's run this bad boy. So right here I've got jog, where I can just bump it. The way I like to run it is I turn it on run, and then it's just idling. This is in neutral, so it's just circulating right now. Okay, so now I'm going to take my handle, and this is the feed side. Push that out. So obviously your dies will be sitting in here that holds your pipe, and then it's going to you know, your, your pipe will run up through here and it'll be bending your pipe. Okay, when you're, when you want to stop, put that back to neutral. If I want to go back in, flip it the other direction. Okay, put it back to neutral. Anyway, for bending pipe, that is going to be awesome. I'm super excited. This was a good one to pick up. It's going to make my life a lot easier. I'm as excited about this as I am that because this is the powerhouse behind it. This one will push 10,000 PSI. If you know anything about hydraulics, you know Interpack is like top of the line. Pretty good one to pick up. You know, stuff like this, if you can pick stuff like this up secondhand and you're not afraid to work on things, you know, a little bit yourself, you can save some serious money and you can have some really nice equipment. I mean, there's all kinds of stuff throughout this shop that I have done that with and that's one of them. Just wanted to share that with you guys. I think this is one that's going to be a game changer for the shop. Okay, so we got her all welded out. My welds are not the most beautiful on this. I'm having a really hard time getting that dialed in. One of the things that I'm planning on for an upgrade in the shop is someday I want to buy a Dynasty. I just think that the technology has come a long ways. That is a super old machine. The machines nowadays are just so much more tunable. It looks fine for what it is. It's a box so my kids can put their pig stuff in it, so it's going to be fine. But I want my welds to look as pretty as possible, and you know, when I'm putting my name on something, I want it to look the best it can, so anyway, that's on the list. One of these days, I'm going to be getting a Dynasty, but for now, 
keep on trucking. I got a bunch of hardware here. Stopped by Tractor Supply on my way home from work. And we got a lot of hardware to put on, so I'm gonna get moving on it. Okay, so let me show you guys what I've got going here. I've got my hinge piece put in here. I want the hinge on the inside. I just think it'll look nicer, it's cleaner. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take drill a hole. So I'm drilling the hole. These have pre-drilled holes. I'm drilling the hole from the inside out. Okay, so I make sure my drill bit's in the hole. And that just barely fits. Pull that burr off. Now I'm using aluminum pop rivets. These ones are 3 16 by half inch. This here is another super cool tool. So someday we might see that on there. Probably should have been on there today, but I was too excited about that. So it's pneumatic, okay? So you take your rivet and you put it in the gun. Then you drive it in the hole, okay? And then pull the trigger. And it pops the rivet. These aluminum rivets don't run as good, but usually it shoots the centerpiece back into this and catches them all so you don't have them all over the floor. It's a neat tool. Okay, so we got all our rivets in. Our lid is, I guess it's more of a door than a lid. Is riveted on. Close is good. I like it. So now we've got a hasp that we're gonna mount on here so that we can lock it and open, close it, Let's see if we can't get that done. Okay, so here we have the finished product. Got our chains put on, got an eye bolt on each corner at the top. The chain goes around the top rail, hooks onto the hook you see in the middle of the side of the box. Got our latch on, just riveted it on. Lid opens nice, closes nice. That's gonna be the end of the work as far as building it goes. Now we got to get it up to the stock show and get it loaded up, so we'll show you some footage of that. Okay, so we got her all rigged up here. They're just starting to load it up with all their stuff. There's the pigs taking it easy for the night. Okay, that's going to wrap this one up. Thanks for watching.